So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Nihal Almareki, a PhD student from Imperial College London working on the differentiation of a human induced pluripotent stem cells toward erythropoiesis. Today I'm going to show you some preliminary data of uh, my current project, a direct differentiation of a human induced pluripotent stem cells toward erythroid cells under serum-free and hypoxia condition. In this presentation, I'll take you through a brief overview followed by the overall aim, uh, pro uh, aim of my current project. Then the uh, human iPS cells uh, used in all those, in all the included experiments, the way of uh, maintaining them, and then the main part of the presentation, which is the differentiation of iPS cells toward erythroid lineages, and then the, um, some analytical data is finally the conclusion. So as you all may know, uh, blood transfusion is a regular practice in clinic used to restore blood level after hemolytic uh, disease operations or injuries. Uh, according to the World Health Organization, 93 million units are collected annually, yet there are uh, huge concerns about the blood shortages. In developed countries, average donation is 45 uh, donations per 1,000 population, while it's uh, believed that, um, which, account, which accounts for 5% only of that population, while it's uh, expected that 30% of that population will need life-saving transfusion sometimes during their lives. The significant imbalance, plus the, uh, in addition to the conventional blood transfusion uh, drawbacks, have encouraged the scientists to think about uh, some, other, um, uh, some other alternatives. And luckily, the stem cells have been discovered, which are undifferentiated stem cells with two main features, self-renewal and the pluripotency, which is the ability dif to differentiate into many cell types. So um, the, current the current protocols in the literature use uh, differentiating the human embryonic stem cells or the human um, induced pluripotent stem cells using mainly, utilize mainly two main approach. Uh, the embryo body formation or the stromal cell co-culture. However, embryo body uh, formation influences heterogeneity within the uh, produced cells, while researchers using the stromal cell co-culture usually face obstacles of purification, purifying those uh, differentiated cells. So the, uh, unfortunately, uh, protocols in the literature usually show low efficiency in number and functionality require long time in culture, and most of the protocols contain serum and animal-derived products. So that was the rationale of my project that aimed to, um, to, differentiate, to a direct differentiation and efficient production of erythroid cells in vitro from human iPS cells in a serum-free and hypoxia condition, bypassing completely the AB formation step and the co-culture system. So um, I'll start with the human iPS cell line I used for this um, experiment, which was the uh, IMR91 derived from a fetal fibroblast, cultured in m media, which is a defined media, uh, ser defined serum-free and feeder-free media, uh, cultured on mat corning matrogel matrix, and the proliferation and the kinetic uh, the kinetic uh, growth uh, in, this, in these conditions was confirmed with the MTS uh, assay. Then those cells, uh, the polyripotency status of those cells was confirmed by the real-time PCR of four main uh, polyripotency genes, the OX4, NANOG, SOX2, and REX. And then uh, with, the, with the flow cytometry of one, uh, one service marker, which is the SSCA4, which showed 99% of the cells uh, still express the SSCA4, and also with the alkaline phosphatase activity, which is a feature of the pluripotency cells, and finally with the immunocytochemistry of, um, that showed the presence uh, of uh, nuclear and service markers. So those cells that confirmed to be pluripotent, to be pluripotent were ready to be differentiated with our optimized protocol that comprised three main phases. The, the, the first one is, was the hematopoietic induction, followed by the erythroid differentiation, 
seven days per uh, seven days uh, for each phase and then 14 days in phase three which was the uh, erythroid maturation phase the whole protocol took only uh, 28 days and uh, 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 took place in the hypoxia condition why hypoxia because uh, it's it's uh, shown in the literature that it activates transferrin receptor and the iron uptake along erythropoiesis uh, process so the analysis of the produced cells was done every seven days, day seven, 14, 21, and 28. And co in comparison with day zero, the starting cells, the service markers were checked with flow cytometry and immunocytochemistry. The markers checked was, uh, were one pluripotency marker, one early hematopoietic marker, the CD34, the CD45, and early, and then an early, uh, erythroid marker, the CD71, and a late erythroid marker, the CD235A, which is the glycophorin A, the late erythroid marker. And then the hemoglobin presence was confirmed with immunocytochemistry and real-time PCR. Then the uh, micro uh, microscopical analysis with the right GEMSA stain and reticulocyte staining. So the flow cytometry showed decrease in the, uh, the uh, polyripotency marker, the SCA4, and then the, um, while the uh, hematopoietic markers, CD34 and CD45, showed, uh, some pr uh, sh uh, uh, showed to increase by day seven and peak by day 14. So by day 14, I already had 40% of the population showing CD34 and uh, more than 70% of the population positive for CD45. And then following, uh, I checked also the CD71 and the CD235A, the glycophorin A, which uh, started to increase after the hematopoietic markers and um, throughout the uh, culture protocol, the culture period. The, uh, the, uh, the flow cytometry result were also confirmed with the immunocytochemistry. Maybe the photos are not really clear with the, uh, the uh, projector. However, uh, the uh, th the uh, 34 th um, the uh, immunocytochemistry in this sli these slides was uh, done for the CD34 and the uh, CD45, which also confirmed the flow cytometry results that both markers peaked at day 14 and start to de to decrease throughout the erythropoiesis differentiation. So these results, I'm not gonna go th uh, through them. This is the negative control. And then the day seven showing some, uh, some, uh, so showing some signal of the CD34. And then day 14 where the CD34 peaked. And then also started to decrease by day 21 and almost negative by day 28, which showed also the negative for DAPI, the nuclear marker. So by day 28, cells started to lose the nucleus, which is the main features of the erythrocytes, and started to take the uh, typical uh, discoid shape of the erythrocytes. Also, this, these, uh, these slides showing the CD235A uh, versus the CD71, which also uh, increased by day 21 sorry, increased from, the, uh, from day seven and keep increasing throughout the differentiation uh, to erythropoiesis. And also by day 28, we can see the DAPI, the nuclear marker start to decrease and the, uh, by day, uh, sorry, this is day 28. So from day, 20, from day 21, the DAPI started to, de the, uh, to decrease and the uh, uh, glycophorin A started to peak and by day 28, DAPI was almost negative. And sh again, the cells sh take the, uh, the typical discoid shape. Also, the hemoglobin presence was confirmed with, uh, with, the, uh, with the quantitative real-time PCR for the alpha, beta, gamma, and epsilon globin. However, the, ma the majority of the, pr of the hemoglobin present was from embryonic uh, type. Uh, while we still can see some presence of the beta globin, the adult uh, hemoglobin type. Hemoglobin intensity was also confirmed with immunocytochemistry. And then the microscopical analysis showed some enucleated red blood cell 
by day 21 and day 28 they were uh, ten, uh, almost 10 percent of the whole population were already enucleated red blood cells that was also confirmed with the reticulocyte staining the uh, some uh, some because we can see as we can see some cells took already the typical morphology of the read uh, of the reticulocyte which is the rna mesh so in conclusion uh, we presented the preliminary data of a direct differentiation toward erythroid cells using human iPS cells, bypassing completely the EB formation and the co-culture step with uh, partial maturation under hypoxia condition. Phase one showed an expression of the early hematopoietic uh, marker, CD34, and the CD45, the pan-leukocyte marker. By the end of phase two, both hematopoietic marker peaked where uh, they reached 40% and 75% consequently. And, uh, d uh, and decreased gradually throughout the, um, uh, the uh, maturation process. Then phase one also showed some, uh, some uh, signal of, the, of early and late erythroid marker, the CD71 and, uh, and uh, the glycophorin A, which uh, both of them were increasing throughout the differentiation protocol. Also 10% of, uh, of the whole population by the end of phase three so by day 28, we're already enucleated, which is the main feature of the uh, mature erythrocytes. The maturation was also confirmed by the GEMSA staining and the reticulocyte staining. And interestingly, interest, interestingly, we saw also the hemoglobin presence. We confirmed the hemoglobin presence, which was mainly from the embryonic, um, uh, embryonic uh, hemoglobin type. So our protocol, uh, was optimized to be completely serum-free to avoid any immunological, uh, immunological reaction, and uh, so it can be suitable for the uh, to be implemented for clinical application, hopefully in the future. That's it, and thank you so much.